have made this without making an extra backup, but it all worked, so it's fine. Hey guys, you definitely need this. A couple of months ago I said goodbye to my Synology disk station. Unfortunately, Synology NAS station has to go back to its owner. It's not that I wanted to, but it was on the loan for the review and I needed to send it back. But that gave me an opportunity to move to Argon Eon and the Raspberry Pi NAS, which I've been using ever since for hosting my media files and actually files that I use for No Enough Tech. But one of the things that I haven't got around to doing was to actually upgrade the uh, Argon Eon to boot from SSD. It was working from SD cards and if you were running Raspberry Pi based NAS before you know that chances of corrupting that micro SD cards well they grow exponentially. So today is the day I'm finally going to do it because well I still got that nifty 17 pound adapter that transforms um, M.2 SATA and NVMe drives into USB and I've been using that to troubleshoot my Super 6 cluster. But since the Super 6 cluster is running my home automation, I also have a spare uh, SATA drive coming from my previous cases that I've been using to run my automation, primarily the Pyron Man and one of the desk mice. I covered them in this video here. As these were my home automation servers, I had some data I really wanted to retrieve from it, and since uh, they weren't really in a usable state, straight away. I found out that there is a really nice utility on Windows that you can use to actually plug in ext4 and ext3 hard drives and extract information. It's called, hmm, let me read that, Disk Internals Linux Reader. It works great, so if you ever want to do that, I strongly recommend you to at least try the free trial version, which is more than enough to accomplish that. And also accidentally before my trip to Marrakesh I found out that somehow my music has disappeared but I had another copy on my old NAS drive so I dig out that hard drive and then I discovered that I have one and a half terabytes of uh, storage unused. It's not the speediest drives however it could let me actually transfer all the media from Plex server into that 2.5 inch hard drive and store it there externally but it shouldn't really impede the, um, any performance or anything, so i gonna add this as well. If you watch my Argon Eon, I did mention that there is a hidden USB 3.0 port inside the Argon Eon that you can actually use it for precisely this purpose. And as it happened, that 17 pound uh, extension for the M.2 drives work beautifully because it slots in where it's supposed to, and, well, that's really all I need. And as all my slots inside Argo Eon are already populated, to use that Plex hard drive, I have to connect it externally. Thankfully, I have one of those SATA to USB adapters, and that comes in handy. And as it happened, the connector that is being used to connect to Raspberry Pi, it doesn't actually obscure the second USB 3.0 port, so I'm not going to get that speed penalty either. Uh, it's not going to look pretty, and I might find a case for it somewhere. I did remember having it hidden somewhere. So yeah, that's my next step. But as it happened, that's going to be my configuration for Plex and that's what I'm going to go with. I already covered the topic of booting from USB on Raspberry Pi 4, so you can have this video there and follow the steps in there. Now, I was actually following it myself when I discovered that the newer and easier method of actually using Raspberry Config to achieve that wasn't working because my firmware wasn't upgraded. So I had to still go through the steps of the old ways of updating the firmware manually and then actually selecting it to be my boot, the, the USB drive. I also used the RP clone, which I used so many times before to transfer clone all the data from SD card onto my new SSD. And I was pretty much done. All it left is was to keep the fingers crossed and uh, hope that everything boots without any problems. It's never that easy, isn't it? <laughs> It did boot, it did show that everything is working on the display, so, you know, everything, including drivers, were transferred to my new medium. However, I could not wake up the web user interface. Funnily enough, all my drives were connected and I could access them via Samba, 
So that was really, really strange and I wasn't sure what was going on. At first I tried NS lookup to see what my router response was like and you couldn't find the server at first. And then after I rebooted everything, then it could find the server, but I still could not access the web UI, which really I needed to set up my new drive. After several of good minutes of googling, I actually discovered what could be the case. It was Nginx, which caused problem. For some reason, it failed to load, and Nginx on uh, Open Media Vault is actually used to host the, uh, the web interface, the whole UI. So that's why it wasn't loading, and that's why everything else was working. So I have discovered that. The error log mentioned that I actually don't have a directory for storing log files, and it wasn't creating one either. Not sure what caused that, but that gave me at least an idea what I should do next. I went to the specific directory, created nginx uh, folder and then the error log itself, and that seems to be fine, it resolved the issue and I was able to get into the web UI and start setting things up. I had my both drives formatted for the Windows, but that wasn't a problem because I could easily reformat them using Open Media Vault, uh, which I did. So the last thing was really to transfer my media to Plex drive and reset my Plex. At first I was getting some problems actually set up a new uh, file system, but once I restarted everything it seems to be working fine. Probably a bug or a glitch, but well, since it worked. Then I had to move to Plex installation. It was actually quicker to remove the container and set up container again and set up a new volume. Open Media Vault has actually this very handy shortcut where you can display the whole path, copy it and then transfer it over to Portainer in which you can use it to map your or bind your volume so you could recognize the folders, media, etc, etc. So that's why I did and, well, that was pretty much all. And I know what's gonna happen next. Bunch of you are gonna probably complain that I have my NAS using Raspberry Pi when there are some more robust solutions. But frankly speaking, I've been running Raspberry Pi NAS for over five years and I've not lost a single piece of data. I know I mentioned some lost music, but that wasn't related to the NAS at all. And I did recover it at the end, thanks to my older NAS, so that doesn't count. But if you want to know my take on Raspberry Pi NAS versus Synology Drive and NAS, then I do have a video in here, so you can watch that and maybe understand what is my commitment towards one platform or another. Right, I hope this video was quite helpful to you, especially if you have Argon Ian, but don't be like me. Just make sure you've got a backup or at least disconnect the drives just in case, because you never know what can happen and you probably don't want to lose any of the data, right? Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll definitely see you soon with the next video. Take care, bye!